Hi, I'm Ed Rodeau with TFB TV, and we're on the floor of SHOT Show 2017. We're in the Seymour booth, and if you're like me, you hear Seymour and you think of optics, but we're looking at something very different that they make. This is from Seymour Competition, and this is the M26 uh, pump action shotgun, or manual action shotgun. And this is something that sees deployment with the US Army. It's a very unusual uh, 12 gauge design. We've got Ira with us from Seymour. Can you talk to me a little bit about the history of where this gun came from? Yeah, it started originally back in 1999 as an Act okay, 2 yeah, development yeah. project. Um, and at that point in time, there was an unmet requirement by the Army. It was an operations requirement document, an ORD, uh, that was signed in 1997 by General Ernst. Okay. And we had an opportunity to uh, make a proposal that we could actually meet the ORD. Picatinny Arsenal at that point in time had done a whole study and said nobody could make a shotgun that would do X, Y, and Z. So we designed this shotgun to do what was in the ORD. And the original version was an under-barrel shotgun that would mount under the M4 and mount under the M16. Similar to how uh, you get see the 40 millimeter grenade launcher, right? Exactly. Same kind of concept, but in a 12 gauge. Yes, the exact same concept. And so this version, this is actually seen deployment out with the US Army. Can you yes. tell me, like, who's using this right now? Um, it's used by the MPs in that configuration that you have right. with a hydraulic buttstock. Um, it's, that's their basic um, weapon. Right. And it's also used by the Engineer Corps. Okay. And it's been in Afghanistan, uh, it's been Iraq, um, it's seen uh, wide usage. Um, it originally did not have the buttstock, that came along later. Yeah, and so if we look at, there's a bunch of different variants of these as far as different ways that these have been deployed, but from that original concept, it's, it's a shotgun, the amount under an M4 carbine, so there's a bunch of features that are specific to that idea of rifle mounting. So the iron sights on here fold, which, and this is a push, and this is a pull. It's a rear mounting bracket right. that slides over the barrel of the M4, and this fits within the barrel nut. These two little pins that probably don't show up right now on camera uh, locate amongst the teeth of the barrel nut, one at five o'clock, one at seven o'clock. Right, so that's your recoil absorption. And then this block here, you essentially are zeroing the shotgun, right? Yeah, yeah th this is detented mm -hmm. and it could move up and down and it allows you when it's mounted on the shotgun to raise and lower the barrel. So you wind up with using your sight picture for your 5.56 round for the shotgun. You zero the shotgun at 25 meters and it has the, uses the same sights that the M4 uses. Right. So you don't have to have two sets of sights on the um, or, gun. And you're not trying to calculate what your change might be or anything like that. You can adjust it from any rifle to any rifle. Yes. Um, and then can you talk to me a little bit about this spring-loaded standoff device as yeah. far as why that exists and how that's there? Um, it was part of the requirement that there be a standoff device and uh, rather than let them be on their own to make a standoff, we incorporated it within the gun because we could control the weight of it. The rate requirement was so stringent that we couldn't let them put on a steel uh, standoff or similar device. Right. It, it couldn't be any less than an M203, isn't that right? The weight of this? Yeah. Is a, two pounds and nine ounces. Wow. So it's Super right light. in there. Not with the buttstock on no, it, obviously. No, yeah, but as the standalone. And, right. So when this is M4 mount now, there's two different magazine sizes. Three round here. That was a five round that you had in your hand before. OK. So explain to me some of the manipulation of this, right? So we've got this charging handle on the side that lets us work the gun. But when somebody's actually using this, forward, and then yep, the magazine the is is your uh, pistol grip, just like it would be on a two or three. Okay, so there, and then we can pull the trigger, and then your reaction hand is able to rack it like that, and then that charging handle will fold, right, so that it's not extended out. Right, and we try and teach people to um, manipulate this in a fanning motion. Okay, yeah. So they can grab around the front of the receiver and have a more stable platform than just holding on to the right, handle. Right, rather than that, that 
fist right. grip, right? That makes a lot of sense. Um, this is, uh, if you don't pull the trigger and you want to open the, the uh, bolt, the bolt release is here, which is ambidextrous right in the right. middle. So you've got a bolt release and a magazine release there, and it's a rock and lock kind of magazine? Yeah, like an M14. Interesting. Um, so this is the, the U.S. Army version, um, but you also make and can sell these to civilians, right. is that correct? Yeah, the U.S. Army buys it with this module here, the mounting bracket that's on the um, M4, and that's what it takes to so take it off. That's it, it just that's came it. off like that? Yeah. Wild. So once you know all your kit, it's just slide in, lock, and that push pin, that yep. single pin. Neat. So very, very quick to detach it. Yep. Huh. And the buttstock here is held in by, with an, one pin. Right, and so that, you could trade to a pistol grip or a right. shoulder stock yeah. or that here kind of thing. Here it is with a pistol grip, and here it is with the buttstock. The Army gets it with the buttstock. The pistol grip is an authorized, approved, optional accessory that they can buy on their own, because when the gun was type classified, that wasn't tested with it. It was oh, okay. tested uh, a couple of years later. So right. they're allowed to buy it that way, but it doesn't come in the kit. Um, how punishing is it to shoot with a pistol grip? Not. Oh, really? Not, no, no. And as a matter of fact, there's one with a very short barrel that's an AOW, the So this PDW. here, yep. yeah, this is more of a civilian focused version of this, correct? Yep. Like. It just has a Picatinny rail straight across. It doesn't have the mounting bracket capabilities. But this one, because the barrel's so short that the um, cup, is, the wad is not in bore any period of time, so there's no back pressure built up behind it. It's not like the seven and three quarter inch. This one's a heavier gun, but it's more punishing than this. This, right. this one you could shoot all day with one hand and really? with double O buck, it wouldn't bother you at all. What is the barrel length on this? It looks three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Awesome. Um, and so I didn't know this because I'm a Canadian, but um, right in the U.S., your SBR law requires a $200 tax, tax stamp, but for any other weapon, it's five dollars, right. right? Yes. Very, very neat. Yeah, yeah. So all of these that you see here are $200 tax stamps. Right. This one is a $5 tax stamp. And so what's MSRP on this if somebody wanted to buy one? Uh, $1,250. Awesome. And, and so that's three round mag, five round mag. So they would have to order that through their FFL, is that the idea? Do, these don't really show up on gun, gun store shelves, do they? No, there's not. There's some dealers that do buy them. They can buy them directly from us if they like, and we do the paperwork. Interesting. This unit here in the standalone version, right, we've got sort of an AR-15 style buttstock, but this is not an AR buffer tube. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It, it's a uh, hydraulic uh, buttstock, and according to government testing, it absorbs 70% of the peak impulse. So okay. the recoil is spread over a longer period of time, and it's rather pleasant to shoot. This is uh, a rubber butt pad that's very soft. This is 20 durometer. And oh, it, so it's it, got a lot of squish to it. It's a yeah. lot of squish. But if I push it up against you real hard, yep. you can see the buttstock. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That compression happening right there in the middle. Right. Very neat. So, and, and I've seen, like, you can get aftermarket things that sort of do that, but this is like a full hydraulic inside, yes. right? Yeah, this is actual hydraulic. Neat. What is your sort of ballpark of price um, on this? I think this is... Uh, Fifteen ninety-five. Okay, right. So right in around that fifteen hundred mark. Yeah. Very neat. Uh, but this would come with a two hundred dollar tax stamp, right? Because this is a, a seven inch. It's an SPS. Yes. Yes. Right? This, this, is, this is a short barrel shotgun. Thank you very much for that, Ira. Uh, this is really interesting. I mean, this isn't necessarily new, but this is something that I've never seen before, and is a little bit of Seymour's secret of firearms manufacturing. Um, we'll have more from the Flora Shot Show all week this week. <laughs>